I met a gypsy. Dude, the before you go, when you jumped out of a plane with no parachute. I mean, look, this Keanu it, Reeves did it. How hard could it be? <laughs> but this is that. I guess that's like one of the things that really sums you up is because it's like, okay, here's the risk. Then here's how we mitigate the risk. And then you're like, yeah, no, that'll work. And then it's like, how? Finding people to, to do it with me was so hard because Red Bull looked at it and they talked to like the top Red Bull guys and they were like the skydivers who Red Bull has. Their Red They're Bull the Air best. Force are the yeah. best. Yep. At least at the time, they were definitely the best. Yeah. And I'm like, I want the best. I'm sponsored by Red Bull. Help me. And they went to their top guy and the guy's like, yeah, he's not mm. that good. We just, yeah, yeah, he might die. So Red Bull pulls all of their guys. I'm like, well, shit. Now I'm left with all these B dudes. Yeah. So then everyone's like, well, we're going to lose our license. We're going to lose our license. We can't do it. So I went to the military and I found Plammer who was a, so the guy that caught me, like that was holding me like stable. There's no way to say that correctly, but the guy that's like <laughs> whole, trying to keep me like in balance. Uh, yeah, so and alive and alive. Um, he'd only had like 15 jumps at that time, but he was a tunnel rat. So he's like, I don't care if I lose my license. Like I a tunnel rat, sorry, a sky dancer. He works in tubes. Yeah. Okay. Does all the like works there. Yeah. Um, so Scotty was like, yeah, let's do that. And then Plammer, military guy. He's like, never leave a man behind. I'm like, good enough for me. <laughs> then we had a film guy. He's like, well, I mean, I'm just filming. I'm not really part of it. No one knows who I am. So yeah. MX filmed a uh, guy named MX ironically. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was great. What, so, were you just shitting or was that just And like, our pilot was like 15 years old, so it was great. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> no one was worried about losing their shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, if I do this, I'm going to have the best of the best. Okay, you can't have the best of the best. All right, I'll have everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> have anybody else. Were you just shitting yourself or did you just fully think that was going to be perfect? No, the, the thing about that was I actually, we did one test run where I jumped out and flipped as many times as I could, tried to get away from the camera or the camera, the, like everybody, and they caught me and tackled me. I was like, well, this is stupid. This is easy. And then it's hard to get something that is easy that is awesome with those people, with yeah. the right circuit area, that people are going to say, well, the, if you miss, you're going to die. Yeah. Like, yeah, if you miss all this stuff, it's going to suck. Yeah. Like, okay, that's obviously the biggest consequence, but we'll be fine. Yeah. So, no, I jumped out, and the scariest part was thinking, this feels normal. I felt like Matt Huffman. Matt Huffman always goes, yeah, I can't get near an edge. I'm like, why not, man? He's like, oh, I just want to jump. I'm like, dude, that's that's beyond crazy. You're you're actually like, you're insane. I like it, but <laughs> you're insane. So that was when I jumped out. I'm like, shit, I'm Matt Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a thing. Like, so you know Jeff Weatherall? Yeah, of course. So Jeff was the last person on the podcast, and we were talking about that whole like balance between like he said when he first started doing base jumping or like wanting to base jump, it was all about ego, and like his ego wanted him to base jump. And then he got past that. He had, he said he had a jump where he was like, fuck, okay, that was really stupid. Like I did not have the money in the bank to cash that check. Yeah. And he's like, I can't do this out of ego anymore. So he, like, he said there's like that really healthy balance between the ego side and then the smart side of like calculating risk. And then there's the Matt Hoffman that it's just not even a fucking issue. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> oh shit, where's my shoot? Um, no, but what's interesting about that, the kind of the, the same thing, Every time on top of a big ledge or something, and you, and you got a parachute and you're base jumping, you know the most fun is to step off, just take a deep breath, and it's like peace. And then it's like all of a sudden the world just comes up around you, and the the, the wind and the sound, and you know that's the best feeling. And yet every time I'm with a group of people, like I'm thinking, how many flips can I do? And now you're flipping, you're spinning, you don't see anything, you don't feel anything. It's not that spiritual, like yeah. it's just. It's a big dick measuring contest. Yeah. And I, like Weatherall said, I need to get back to the roots and be like, when I'm base jumping, keep it simple and just enjoy it. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.